In this video lecture, we will describe three most confusing terms often used in immunology. These terms are plasma, serum, and antiserum. To understand these terms, we should have knowledge about the composition of the blood. Let's describe blood and its components in brief. Whole blood consists of two main components. First component is known as formed elements and second is known as blood plasma, or plasma. Formed elements is the cellular portion of blood, and it comprises of 45% of the whole blood. Plasma is the fluid portion of blood, and comprises of remaining 55% of the whole blood. Further, formed elements consists of cells and cell fragments. 99% of these are red blood cells. 1% consists of white blood cells and platelets. These formed elements are suspended and carried in the fluid called plasma. Plasma is a straw-colored liquid. It consists of water, proteins and other solids. There are three types of plasma proteins, albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. Albumins maintain blood volume and pressure. Fibrinogen is an important clouding factor. Globulins include antibodies produced by lymphocytes and play a role in immunity. When a blood sample is centrifuged in a glass tube, the red blood cells sink to the bottom of the tube. This is because, among whole blood components red blood cells have highest density. Plasma forms a layer on top, because it is less dense. White blood cells and platelets form a very thin buffy coat layer between RBCs and plasma. This is because they are less dense than RBCs, but denser than blood plasma. So now we know that plasma is the fluid portion of the blood. Let's now see what is serum. Serum is plasma minus fibrinogen. If whole blood sample is allowed to clot, the fluid that separates out is called serum. During the process of clot formation, fibrinogen is converted into insoluble threads of fibrin. Therefore, the fluid called serum does not contain fibrinogen. For serum preparation, whole blood is allowed to clot. Then centrifugation is done. Clot sinks at the bottom, and supernatant is the serum which is carefully removed. Here, note that both serum and plasma will contain antibodies. Let's now see what is antiserum. Antiserum is antibody rich serum. In other words, it is the serum containing antibodies. Now question is, serum and antiserum both contain antibodies. What is the difference? We know that, serum is the fluid phase of clotted blood. When serum is taken from an individual immunized against a particular antigen it is called antiserum. So the difference is that, antiserum is obtained from an immunized animal or individual. Let's understand this. Suppose, this is an antigen responsible for a disease. These antigens are injected into a rabbit. To the immune system of the rabbit, these antigens are foreign or non-self. Rabbit will respond to this foreign antigen by producing antibodies against it. These antibodies are isolated from the rabbit's serum and concentrated in a solution known as antiserum. Antiserum is used for passive immunizations. In passive immunization, preformed antibodies are administered in a patient. For example, to protect people who'd have been exposed to extremely virulent infections or toxins, such as tetanus, hepatitis, rabies, and snake venom.